What a marvelous thing Peleas is, <laughs> cried the young Madame de Combremer. I'm mad about it. <coughs> and drawing closer to me with gestures of a wild woman seeking to captivate me, picking out imaginary notes with her fingers, she began to hum something which I took to represent for her Peleas's farewell and continued with vehement insistency as though it were important that she should at that moment remind me of that scene, or rather should prove to me that she remembered it. <laughs> I think it's even finer than Parsifal, she added, because in Parsifal the most beautiful things are surrounded with a sort of halo of melodic phrases outworn, outworn by the very fact of being melodic. I know you're a great musician, madam, I said to the dowager. I should so much like to hear you play. Madame de Combremer de Grandin gazed at the sea so as not to be drawn in a conversation, being of the opinion that what her mother-in-law liked was not music at all. She regarded the talent, bogus according to her, but in reality of the very highest order, that the other was acknowledged to possess, to possess as a technical accomplishment devoid of interest. It was true that Chopin's all-in surviving pupil declared, and with justice, that the master's style of playing, his feeling, had been transmitted through herself to Madame de Camembert alone. <laughs> but to play like Chopin was far from being a recommendation in the eyes of the Grandin sister who despised nobody so much as the Polish composer. <gasps> oh, they're flying away! exclaimed Albertine, pointing to the gulls which, casting aside for a moment their flowery incognito, were rising in a body towards the sun. Their giant wings from walking hinder them, quoted Madame de Compromet. Confusing the seagulls with the albatross. <laughs> <laughs> I do love them. I saw some in Amsterdam, said Albertine. They smell the sea. They come and sniff the salt air from through the paving stones. Oh, you've been to Holland. Do you know the Vermeers? Madame de Compromère Le Grandin asked imperiously, in the tone of which she would have said, You know the Vermantes? <laughs> for snobbishness in changing its object does not change its accent. Albertine replied in the negative, thinking that they were living people. <laughs> but the mistake was not apparent. I should be delighted to play for you, the dowager, Madame de Compromère said to me. But you know, I only play things that no longer appeal to your generation. I was brought up in the worship of Chopin, she said in a loud tone, for she was afraid of her daughter-in-law, and knew that the latter who considered that Chopin was not music, to talk of playing him well or badly was meaningless. She admitted that her mother-in-law had technique, played the notes to perfection. Nothing will ever make me say that she is a musician, was Madame de Compromère de Condam's conclusion, because she considered herself advanced. Because, in the matter of arts only, one could never be far enough to the left. She maintained not merely that music progressed, but that it, pro it progressed along a straight single line, and that Debussy was in a sense a super Wagner, slightly more advanced again than Wagner. She did not realize that if Debussy was not as independent of Wagner as she herself was to suppose in a few years' time, because an artist will after all make use of the weapons he has captured to free himself finally from one whom he was momentarily defeated. He nevertheless thought when people were beginning to feel surfeited with works that were too complete in which everything was expressed to satisfy an opposite need. There were theories, of course, to bolster his reaction temporarily like those theories which in politics come to the support of laws against the religious order or of wars in the East, a natural teaching 
the yellow peril, etc., etc. People said that an age of speed required rapidity in art, precisely as they might have said that the next war could not last longer than a fortnight, or that the coming of the railways will kill the little place beloved of the coaches, which the motor car was nonetheless to restore to favor. Composers were warned not to strain the attention of their audience, as though we had not our, at our disposal different degrees of attention among which it rests precisely with the artist himself to arouse the highest. For those who yawn with boredom after ten lines of a mediocre article have journeyed year after year to Beirut to listen to the ring. In any case, the day was to come when, for a time, Debussy would be pronounced as flimsy as Massenet, and the agitations of Melisande degraded to the level of Manon's. For theories in schools, like microbes and corpuscules, devour one another and by their strife ensure the continuity of life. But that time was still to come.
mais le concert recommença. Et Swan comprit qu'il ne pourrait pas s'en aller avant la fin de ce nouveau numéro du programme. Il souffrait de rester enfermé au milieu de ces gens dont la bêtise et les ridicules le frappaient d'autant plus douloureusement qu'ignorant son amour, incapable, s'il l'avait connu, de s'y intéresser et de faire autre chose que d'en sourire comme un enfantillage, ou de le déplorer comme une folie, il le lui faisait apparaître sous l'aspect d'un état subjectif qui n'existait que pour lui, dont rien d'extérieur ne lui affirmait la réalité. Il souffrait surtout, et au point même que les sons des instruments lui donnaient envie de crier, de plonger son exil dans ce lieu où Odette ne viendrait jamais, et où personne, où rien ne la connaissait.